Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So I have another interesting video here. This is a 2008 SAP 9.3 2.0 turbo. This car was here before with a random misfire and we replaced uh, all the intake valves and rephased uh, all the exhaust valves. So the car is back. This is like two, three months or so time-wise after. And um, well, the car is been running good. The only issue that he been having is that you know when he gets to a stop sign the car dies so I um, find out that we have a problem with the throttle body so we replace the throttle body now the car is no longer uh, dying out the stuff but the check engine light comes on with like a random misfire and um, I went to you know to check uh, how the cylinders are working let me put a uh, so I got the picoscope already connected and I'm going to show you what I have in there. Uh, sorry, let me put the, tr the trigger in auto. Actually, let's trigger out of, out of B. It's only one. And let's raise this trigger a little bit. That uh, we that will make us uh, a little cleaner signal. Mm. Trying to just put the four but I guess it's not possible. Well, this is a four cylinder engine. So we have, this is cylinder number one and the fire in order is 1342. So we will have the three and the four after. Let me see if I can offset the channel a little bit. Okay, now that's actually not what I need. So scale, nope. Uh, scale is just making it go up and down too. Hmm. And the offset too as well. Now let's try that with the blue channel. What I'm trying to do is move the, the capture a little bit. Let me see if I can do that with a trigger. Yeah, that worked out. All right. So let me show you what I have. So we have the uh, Pico scope already connected and uh, hopefully that shows good in there. I also have the scanner right here. So I want to show you what is what is going on because it shows like it's misfiring on all cylinders which I don't feel any misfire. The engine is running good. Uh, SAV is very peculiar on the software. So let me go over. This is going to be something quick hopefully at least to show you guys. So as you can see, let me make sure that you guys are focused on to what I need to see or to show you. So those are the misfires. Right now the engine is running good. As you can see it was showing like a 109, 164, 90s. See this one just went up a little bit. And this one is in 165. But I don't feel a misfire, you know, on any of the cylinders. The secondary is... Uh, it's actually looking very, very nice too. And let me see if I can zoom a little bit so you guys can see the waveform, at least on the one. As you can see, that's a nice, very looking uh, waveform. This is where we have, this is both uh, number one. So channel channel uh, two, which is the red channel, is red. Uh, it's also cylinder one. That's just for... Uh, you know to show you know the, the sequence and make sure that we have cylinder to identify the cylinder number one like that we can get a fire in order which is one three four two again and let me show you what I'm using for this so what I'm using to get all the signals and everything is same is uh, from picoscope as well this is, this is a very nice setup so with this one you can read up to 12 cylinders so what I'm using is one channel and the channel app is down at the bottom and the other one is just a sink. It also has a ground that I connected to one of the bolts, uh, you know, on the frame. And I have uh, extension on, on, on all the coils. I put a ground on each one of the coils just, just in case I need it. I don't think I need it for this system, but just to be careful, just, you know, to not have any spikes around. And then I put, you know, all the wires for all the coils. Uh, you know, like, a, if, like if this will be a distributor system. Very, very nice, very easy to connect. And you can have, again, up to 12 cylinders. You will read uh, six cylinders per channel. So you can use 
channel A and channel B for six cylinders each and then your trigger on a third channel so with a four channel oscilloscope you can read up to 12 cylinders so okay we have a prom that is reading random misfires when again I don't see anything like that on the secondary if we have a misfire either created by an injector that is leaking too much or not spraying enough like a lean condition the, the, the the fuel trims are perfect. I went into OVD, OVD2 uh, generic, which is the easiest way to read uh, the values on this one. Because uh, if I show you the values on, on this scanner, this is the OEM part. Uh, let me see if I can find that very quick for you guys. See, it's showing the fuel trim. It's only only shows fuel, uh, uh, the short uh, fuel trim. There isn't zero. This is like the percentage. So around one to zero, which is very, very good. And uh, I don't see anything else being an issue here. But uh, still we have, if we go over to the misfire counters, uh, the counters are going up. It's actually uh, not as good as it was before. I put these extensions in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to uh, I spray these uh, coils with uh, with a mist of water to see if we can uh, capture any misfires. But right now, truly, really, before I was having like you know like a steady um, raising uh, values on the misfires, and as you can see, cylinder one is in 63, is steady. Cylinder two is in 117, is steady, and so on. They're not moving. And to make sure that we are live, you can see that you know the battery voltage just changed and the canister push valve ignition key just changed. Um, combustion signal is, is 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 live. So we're reading values that are uh, changing. So what I'm going to do? Let me actually select uh, the RPM, and I'm going to select the um, the misfire counters, which is my concern like that we have a, a better uh, value so the RPM is on the bottom obviously 900 and something and as you can see cylinder 3 is right now reading more than it was before still again better than it was so I don't see any any misfires I mean if you will have like let's say you know this is number one let me raise this a little bit I don't know why this happens sometimes. I had that same experience when I was uh, using um, the other uh, setup that I have with this same car. For some reason, it tweaks the screen. Oh well, let's let's focus on what we're doing. All right, so this is cylinder uh, again. Channel two is uh, cylinder number one trigger. So one, three, four, two. So this is number three. Cylinder number three is the one that's showing most more misfires. I'm going to erase or reset those counters. You can go into a special functions onto the uh, max assist. And in here you can reset the misfire counters and the knock uh, counters without resetting any other values. With the snap you cannot even work on SAP, so for those that had a snap on a, a scanner, sorry, but you pay big money like I did. I have the uh, snap on Barrow's Edge. It's actually just collecting dust. I use it sometimes just to make sure it works. <laughs> uh, let me go back to the leave data. Hopefully it saves that. Uh, no, I did not. That's one thing that hopefully, you know, hotel changes is that, you know, that you don't have to like reselect everything every time you go back and forth. Sometimes we need or we want to do things like this and then and, and it's just, uh, you have to redo everything. So we have counters, again, I just reset it. Cylinder number one is the one with the least counters. And cylinder three is the one with the most. Again, it's just only nine. The engine is running really good. So I'm going to get a, uh, let me, Focus, uh, focus the camera onto our 
ignition uh, system. Everything looks pretty good in there. I'm going to get a spray just to spray some some fluid into the coils to see if that is the issue. Actually, you know, the other thing you can do, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you one, guys in a second. Is you can use a test light connected to battery ground or to a ground. This I don't think. Uh, actually, yeah, the battery is right here. So let me just get this cover. Oh, you guys not even seeing what I'm doing, but I'm removing the cover for the battery to access the negative terminal. And we're going to put that test light into ground. So, again, it's for you guys to see. This is the test light that I'm going to use. And I connect it to the battery negative. So, what I'm going to do is just to see if any of the coils is, is leaking. Let's call this leak. It's just you can just go around the coil booth to see if it jumps. I don't see any track of uh, usually when you know when a, when a boot is jumped uh, leaking secondary you can see it it usually creates like a white powder on the boot I put you know remember the last time I put the uh, electric grease dielectric grease for the for all the boots yeah no this is definitely not not the issue so we cannot get any any response or like a short and wire or something like that on there so the other test you can do is again the spray just spray a little bit of a fluid in there that will help you if it's any any possibility there is a wire or a boot in this case uh, broken we can increase the potential of picking it up with this way water is a very good conductive and now we have no issues so this is definitely uh, an interesting problem I'm trying I was trying to read you know a TSB is in uh, you know repair information to see if I can find any update that I can perform to correct the knock uh, sensitivity or misfire counter sensitivity because I truly don't see a problem with the car now Let me get a sum in there, and you'll see. Oh, I just heard a. I just heard one. Sorry, guys. I just feel one, and I can hear it. Just don't know where. Okay, this this coil is leaking. Perfect. All right, guys. See the liquid is actually working. So the booth on the coil number one is leaking right here, right at the top. You see that? When I lift it, but me putting the floor in there is right at the bottom of the coil. It's kind of funny because. No, it's not. It is dried up. I can hear it. And that's also good about having, you know, the coils exposed during this test. That lets me see. Because I mean, when you have the coil of a plug, Definitely not having light is better. I 
I can't hear it jumping. And it's funny, when I get that misfire, I don't get any counters going up. Yeah, you can see the secondary waveform. Let me show you that to you guys. Hopefully the camera focus focus in a second. Check the number, I think it's number one. Yeah, look at the look at the uh, uh, secondary waveform on number one. It's it's completely gone. And I can feel that I'm definitely on this fire. If I lift it, you see how it comes back? I hate when it does when it does that thing. All right, we got it back. Now it's not misfire. It, it did misfire in that once, one time. Why my screen is going on and off? I shouldn't have any issues with with this kind of stuff. But right now, let's say you know there is no misfires on the car, and the counters are actually raising up and cylinder three like crazy and look at the signals on on all the coils perfect i can see i'm now i can hear me fire number one but it's because of the fluid that i put let me dry that one out i'm gonna separate it from there so we don't get that uh false uh misfire at least not what i need for because yeah the misfire counters on cylinder three are just going up as you can see we're in 124 and going up the rest of the cylinders not so bad and this is cylinder number three right here the secondary is perfect let me actually I don't know why it's doing that so yeah it's definitely something that my computer is not liking I mean, I had through that box before the wire comes into here. I got actually also a ground in there just in case, and it's on the box. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this uh, multiplex, uh, I think that's the the way Picoscope calls it. It has a ground right here, and I have that wire grounded to the chassis. So I don't really understand why is uh, my laptop not happy with secondary waveforms sorry guys but i'm gonna have to move you around a little bit i gotta get the tripod set up better get the slide off hopefully everything looks nice as i can see it now myself yeah cylinder number three is the one with the most misfires as for now Come on, dude. I don't know what else to do. Let me see if I bring it down, it does the same thing. Because it's kind of like disconnecting the screen. Let's keep this into a smaller window. No matter what, this is a 27 inch. I can really see very well, so. Maybe I can soup a little better for you guys like this way. All right, so looks like that actually fixed the flickering of the screen. Maybe it's RAM or memory RAM. Nope, never mind. <laughs> All right, so I don't feel any misfires and I don't see any misfires caused by fuel or by ignition. And look at the counters. Now we're in 183 and, and going up on the cylinder 3. Engine is running good. I'm going to put a towel just in case over that coil. Cylinder 4 is misfiring too and 100. So 3 and 4.
Godzilla the three I went up to 200 and something but I don't see nothing on the secondary that will tell me that I have a leaking injector or injectors in this case <sighs> fucking light So this is a very interesting case. I don't see anything wrong with with this. Let me do a zoom. Uh, zoom. Let's actually trigger for number one. Put that here. Let me zoom into a little bit on onto that one, so we can see better what I'm talking about. So this is just one cylinder at this time, I guess, well, just number one. If this fucking thing let us see it, sorry for the cursing. Should never do that. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so cylinder number one looks pretty good. And we know we're in the one because remember where we are. Uh, this is starting to be annoying. Let me go back to the capture. Maybe we can zoom into this too. Yeah, we have cylinder three and cylinder one in there. Wait a second, what is that a spike in there? Well no, just 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 noise. Let's forget about the red channel for one second. We don't need it here. Now we can see those two events, number one and number three. Again, if it is lettuce, and right now, as you can see on the scanner, cylinder 3 is in red numbers, so after 255, it's considered a, a random misfire, or a misfire, and then it triggers the, the mill. And that's the issue we have now. I don't see anything crucial in there, and truly, actually, when you accelerate the car, it gets better. Let me do a snap throttle. Yeah, now the chicken in is on. Like I said, after 255, that's what it does. So let's get this. Ah, come on. I don't know why it's doing that. Only an ignition. Um, let's just stop this. And start again. And the screen went dead running. We're going to do a couple of snap throttles to see what we can see if if the screen stay, stays on. Accelerates very good. No hesitations on acceleration. Let me pause this. Let me turn the car off. Let's take a look at that waveform. Let's analyze that a little bit. So we went up to 316 misfires on cylinder 3, 200 and cylinder 4, 116 on cylinder 2, but I don't really see it. So Let's, uh, let's go back a couple of captures where we were accelerating the vehicle like this right here and yeah, this is good All right, let's do a zoom into a 720 this is a 720 so remember one three four two and then a uh, one again you guys looking at the whole thing. I think I did a little bit of a zoom, but maybe better if I remember, take that off. Trying to adjust you guys. Alright, so let's try not to overanalyze anything. Uh, everything looks normal, truly. This is a turbo engine again. Get back with the scanner here. But as you can see, pretty much all the cylinders are looking the same. So now, let's pick up another 720 here. 
and this is even a cleaner cleaner looking waveform it's up and down up and down up and down up and down that's where usually uh, normal I mean it's a field fringe adapt adaptation but it's everything good we don't see any misfires uh, if, if you have a, a cylinder that will be cut enough this will be shorter or you will have a link condition this is where you will uh, capture that better uh, and that's not what we're looking at in here I mean definitely not let's go back another capture yeah I don't see I mean if a 3 is the one giving us a big headache remember I got the sink in here so one three four two I don't see any difference we cannot even call this lean it's, it, it, it spikes up a little bit this is normal uh, that's what you're looking for it's a little bit more resistance on the compression you know with the compression but that is that is completely normal I don't see nothing abnormal on the whole thing so let's take a look at this one and that's actually number one see this this is a little bit different but then you know we have number one one three four two no problems on the event and then we have this which is right here so we got a low spike on the coil which means like we have a less res less uh, resistance in order to jump the the gap let's call that or it can be either just normal I don't I mean truly I don't see any any abnormal even by looking at like this because we can see the number three spike is a little higher compared to the other ones but mm, the waveform looks pretty pretty even pretty decent I don't know what to say it. so let's uh, go back one more time one second guys alright so definitely not I don't see nothing that is really you know caught in my eye again we're doing the snap accelerations and and it's not even happening anything when it's under under load it's just an idle and we already saw before that in idle all the all the uh, waveform looks pretty pretty decent and going all the way to the end like this is back in idle Nope, no difference. That's 22. Oh, sorry, that's not what I needed to change. This is an idle. All oh, this is an idle, and they all look good. Okay, so let me stop in here and think about you know what I need to do with this car, but because definitely we have no no misfires. I mean that boot got a little bit of a misfire in there because of the water I'm going to recommend to get those boots if, if possible I'm going to inspect it a little bit a little better to see it happens only in cylinder number one and that's the one with the with the least or with the less uh, events misfire counter wise alright guys so let me stop the video here and let me think about what I'm doing alright guys I'm uh, following up with this uh, sab so what I decide to do after I have a conversation with my good friend Keith and he actually you know guide me through a little bit because you know sometimes when you're working in a car you get your head so much different ideas that a fresh thought a fresh uh, help is always is always good so yes uh, he told me that have you checked your crank uh, crank check signal I said uh, you know what I have not so I told them that you know that was uh, I was already home that was uh, yesterday that I worked on this car so starting fresh today with the crank uh, crank up cells crank check sensor signal and um, let me show you what I'm getting the connections to get that signal so I'm going straight to the computer which is located right at the top of the engine so we have um, I piggyback 
not piggyback. I, I uh, put two two pins on the uh, harness connector to the computer on the left side. That's where the crankshaft uh, crank crank sensor signal wires are. And um, I have the scope ready to go. I also want to show you. I got the scanner connected to see how the misfire counters are uh, going on today. Let me reposition the cart so we can see this a little bit better for you guys and myself. So Identifix is really, really much or pretty much uh, worthless on SAP. There is barely no information and they're just wire diagrams. So I went ahead already and uh, found a wire diagram. Um, this is the crankshaft uh, sensor, uh, sensor right here, the 345. And I'm going to show you how I know it's a 345. So it says it's pin 23, gray wire, and, and pin 26, the black, which is, that's what I already have, uh, two pins in there. So what I did is I just went over, uh, you know, you, you go back and uh, ID the vehicle, then you go over to, actually, well, let me just show you what I did. You go to computers and control systems, and then in there you just pick up the crankshaft signal, uh, crankshaft, crankshaft sensor, sorry. It's early in the morning, so right here you see it says uh, sensor US 345. So this is pretty much just a location and you know, remove and install. This is how the uh, sensor looks. It's a two wire sensor, it's an induct inductive uh, type uh, sensor. And then the description and operation. And one thing that is very important in here is also telling me the crankshaft angle is used to calculate when angle related functions are to be activated. This include ignition, injection, and knock detection. So definitely it's a very important sensor for the problem that we have because, or I have, is, uh, is I know that there is none of misfire, the engine is running very smooth, but we have a promise still of misfire counters and, uh, and a random misfire. That's the only thing that I have right now. I mean, random misfire code because the engine is, is, running, is running great. So I went into wire diagrams and then, and then the, uh, I was lucky the first one is the, the one that has uh, the crankshaft sensor in there. I just did a zoom into that, which is right here, the 345. And again, that's, that's how I got to there. So I already got this uh, scope connected. I set for this one into AC. It's a very strong signal around, you know, plus minus 20 volts AC. It's a very, again, very strong signal. So let me start the vehicle. I'm going to, I got this car, uh, the scanner ready to see the misfire counters. Should probably erase those. So for that, let me, let me start fresh. I just put the ignition on. Uh, very weird from SAV set up, at least on, on, on hotel, you need to read all the DTCs in order to be able to erase or even read. It's not into each control unit. You have to do it like a full scan. But you can always pause it. Well, it says that we have no faults. So let's go back to, um, then in the case, let's go back to the engine control. And there is a special function that we can uh, do, which is uh, reset the misfire and the knock uh, counters without losing any other value, very unique. I'm not sure if it's from Hotel or from uh, Savaself. Hopefully that's better for you guys to see. Reset, to see resetting without losing any other values. Just click OK. And that should do it. So we're going to go to Leave Data. And then I'm going to select the RPM. And I'm going to select the misfire counters and the knock sensor counters too as well. And then just hit show, which that will fill our our screen. So let me start the vehicle and see what we see. Hopefully you guys can hear the engine. It's running super smooth. No, no feeling on any misfires. I mean, it's not a huge amount. We have one in number one, one in number two, two in number three, and four in number four. 
which is not much. And now let's take a look at the scope to see that crankshaft uh, signal. And this is what we got. Let's, uh, I already set up a trigger in here. I'm gonna pick up the the sink notch, which is the biggest one. Uh, trying to stop the wave from from walking on us, you know. It's definitely going to change the amplitude depending on the RPM. So as you saw, I have to like lower the trigger a little bit. So let's see what the values min minimum max we have here. So let's put two cursors. More or less, we got like 20 volts. So let's keep those cursors in there and see if we find anything different. The misfire counters are very minimum. We have A6, 4, and 1. Just gonna keep it running for a little bit and see, you know, if we can capture any uh, anomaly, you know, something different on the waveform on the crankshaft to tell us there is dropping, uh, it's missing something. Now cylinder six, uh, three is in 17. I want to do something that is very simple in here because I'm suspecting also there might be a little bit of that boot on the coil. Um, remember when we were spraying the coils and we have a that little bit of a jump. I mean, it can be that it's not a fully misfire. It's just like, like, like leaking a little bit the the voltage. Number three and number four are the ones. But as like I said again, I don't feel misfire. Even when you have a a small misfire, it will like drop. But I mean, it can be. I, I'm just trying to put my head together, see what I can come up with. Alright guys, let me stop the video and let me swap those coils, I'll be right back. Alright, uh, so I swapped the coils, I put uh, the coil number one on cylinder three, the coil number two on cylinder four, and then coil three and number one, and coil four and number two. I'm going to reset the misfire counters again. Let's go over to lead data. I know you guys are not looking at what I'm doing, sometimes I forgot. I gotta we um, set the, the values that I want and then let's show so let's make this waveform run I already say the first capture of the crankshaft we're gonna keep you guys focused on to the scanner which is uh, the one showing us the the misfires can't, I mean, this is still number three as you can see. So the swapping of the coil didn't do anything. Our crankshaft signal is super steady on the same range. It doesn't change the problem, but that I have, if I accelerate the car, those misfires counters will completely stop. So the issue is only an idle. Nothing to do with the crankshaft. And it's still on cylinders three and four. But I don't feel any anything on the engine. I don't feel any misfires. I mean, if this would be an injector, let's say, you know, uh, leaking a little bit, we will have a rich condition. We will have that showing on the field trims. And I can assure you, I mean, look at the, the two are the same. I mean, didn't do anything. I just did that for quick and easy. Uh, test. I can go over to uh, the data again. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. And I have been, uh, you know, checking this up. So if we go over to the field trims, the short term is not even in one. I can go also because this doesn't give us a long, a long term uh, field trim. So the only way to do that, it will be to get out of here 
and let's go over to you know generic OVD2 we have to do an auto scan to communicate with the computer that is actually very quick on this one so oops, nope I don't want to exit so we can go into leave data or live data sorry and uh, so we got no DTCs which in, we are in closed loop so we can check that um, the coolant temperature if we want we have okay right here short term long term as you can see they're both in zero we can get the engine RPM uh, air mass flow master flow sensor I think that's pretty much what we want we can change on on the hotel we can change right here the, for grams per second this is what they rec uh, the factor information said that you need to have like between three to five grams per second at idle and that's what we have five five grams per second this is a turbo engine the short term and the long term they're like beautiful so as you can see the engine is pretty much warm right now 161 and I started cold I just swapped the coils and I was able to lean on the engine so it wasn't even it was just barely warm but I don't feel no misfires the engine is running very good I mean I feel a little bit of a shake in uh, like you know like hesitation back and forth on the engine but not a misfire it's like a room 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 a little bit but like I mean it doesn't even change much the RPMs because if we see the RPMs they're, they're going from 882 to 925 and not that quick we can actually graph that if we want uh, okay let's zoom a little bit on X doesn't give us much of a of a zoom 8x is the maximum but you can see even in the in the graphic which is a very small graphic uh, we can go into one that is is very minimum it's not that quick of a change on the RPMs which is normal on every single car I mean you're never gonna have a car that has you know a perfect uh, RPM so I am a little confused on what, what this can be thinking on for me this might be a problem with like software crunch uh, crunch signal is super super perfect as you guys can see right there it hasn't changed at all hopefully that's showing up very good on the camera we have the same amplitude in, in idle Yeah, I'm going to stop the. Well, we have no DTC so far. One thing you can do with this picoscope is uh, you can uh, right here use the tools. If you want to know how many um, tooth are in between uh, sinks. <coughs> You first have to put, you know, two uh, two cursors that this way, right? And in between the cursors, it's going to tell us how many tooth uh, we have. Kind of like right there. So, what you got to do is you go to tools, and then uh, I think it's a match channels. Let me see. Uh, channels, uh, yeah, we can uh, channel convert tip the uh, create convert A and B. No, I don't use it very much because this is preferences macro reader. Keyboard updates. Uh, no, that's not what I need to do. I'm pretty sure what. Oh, oh no, I remember. Add a measurement, and then in here we can between rulers, 
and then we can check for uh, rising edge count which is the same thing and then it's going to tell me right here on the map <coughs> hopefully you got uh, it says that we have 58 between the rulers so in between this ruler we got 58 raising edge uh, edge so that's your tooth and if we go back to the information that we have into uh, all data let's go back to the sensor just to make sure that I'm doing this correctly uh, what's uh, here now actually it's in description and operation yep I perforated this with 58 ribs so you see right here let me make sure you guys are looking at that very well so right here with a says type yep I per you see, uh, perforated this with 58 ribs is mounted on the crankshaft so that's what the sensor should read so if we go back to the um, picoscope and the match channels that we have actually not the measurement that we did we got exactly 58 so we're not missing any tooth everything is as it should so no checking in line yet on the scanner let me go back to the scanner the field trims are in control completely perfect the temperature is right now 183 you can see the idle is fluctuating I would say maybe 50 rpm more or less which is completely completely normal so guys uh, again let me stop the video I'm going to take uh, the cart for a test drive again see what I feel see if I can get that check engine light to come back or not sometimes uh, you overkill stuff that is not really a problem I guess you know go with what the car was experiencing before with the bad throttle uh, plate that um, throttle body was getting a stuck when you accelerate I was doing tests and when you release the throttle was staying like let's say you know I, I think I have a video of it I showed this to the customer it opens up completely and it went like and then like not smoothly I was accelerating the car softly and then it start to go as you accelerate it was like and it stayed and then go completely full and then the same thing you release it slowly and it goes to like completely open to like that same position and then it's slowly back so that's what we replace the throttle plate or the throttle body and um, no more stalling but I did have the check in line with a random misfire yesterday I'm going to have to take it for a test drive again and see the problem is we got a snow so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that today or not and since I have uh, this car here I wanted to like double check this information with the current thing uh, current up uh, sensor signal make sure that everything is as it should and it looks like it's, it is so that's a stop capture of the sensor I still got it connected so as you guys can see it's nice and smooth very clean signal alright guys so let me stop the video don't make this too extra long and uh, see what else I can find all right guys uh, this is gonna be like the first part because the video is getting a little long so one thing that I wanted to also show you and every removal of the wires and everything from the from the car is the setup that I'm using for this uh, I'm actually using the snap-on cart to hold my uh, Pico stuff I like to keep my oscilloscope uh, stuff at hand you know very I got feel it feels a uh, probe right there just in case I need it and that's all the picoscope on the next drawer <laughs> I'm sorry I got the Maxxis Elite and I got uh, all the uh, scope wires for snapping the next one is all the stuff that we have for the snapping tool as well. I got the SIA 2000. I never used that one. It's a little complicated to set up. Actually, it's not really that bad on PicoScope. It's a little more complicated on, 
on a snap on I mean truly not that bad you have to just go you know negative and positive when you're working in a in a waste part system I have also the uh, coil over plug adapters for it a lot of them pressure transducers and so on for the snap on and on the last one I got the bare's edge and all the OBD1 connectors I got actually the VCDS in there because I use the VCDS with the snap on bare's edge I set it up in there and I have the computer right at the top I use a, a little laptop on the top where I have a, a external hard drive just to keep a lot of the information that I need all that the Mitchell and so on uh, I use that uh, computer for programming so I got in the first big drawer I have uh, the Kardec cam, uh, the infrared camera, my smoke machine and uh, this is a fluke for hybrids and a lot of stuff in there so I hope you guys like this video don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for those that are supporting the channel I will be posting a link for those that want to also help me a little bit in there thank you so much and uh, wait for the second part see what else I can do with this one if I find something else